Hi, listeners, and those of you that may be you want to create your own podcast. I need to tell you about a platform that I use, and one of my favorite podcasts, Be the Bridge with Latasha Morrison, uses is Anchor. Anchor FM is free, totally free. It's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And then it does the heavy lifting for you. You can distribute your po- it distributes your podcast so you can be heard on places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So if you're interested in making your own podcast, I highly encourage you to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's the way I did it. It's the way that Latasha Morrison with Build the Bridge did it. And it's the way many of the podcasts that I listen to do it. Go to anchor.fm. You won't regret it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Bulldog Educator hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find the Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at the Bulldog EDU. That's at the Bulldog EDU. You can also find us and content related to education and this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org. Hi, and welcome to episode 12, season one of the Bulldog Educator with your host, Kirsten Wilson. I'm actually on my way home from work um, on a Thursday night. And, you know, this time of year, uh, it's sometimes dark as I drive home, um, which is really odd um, and can be a little sad. So um, I look for things at this time of year to be thankful for. um, And so I look for Christmas lights um, and I look for deer on the side of the road. Some of that is to for my own protection, but also... um, as they're eating um, and grazing on the side of the road um, because I live um, in what most would regard as a rural area and so I get to see lots of um, wildlife as I drive home and so I'm grateful for being able to see things like that. I'm also grateful that I do live in such a rural part of the country because unlike some um, of my colleagues who have to drive through a lot of traffic to get home, I have a very peaceful and relaxing drive home. And so I enjoy decompressing from the day and the activities of the day. In this particular podcast, uh, I want to talk about um, something that has really been resonating with me the last few weeks. Um, And one of the things uh, that, that started this all is that in my role as director of curriculum instruction with my current organization, which is a provider of virtual programs, um, specifically high school courses um, for the state of Arkansas, um, it has been an unusually busy time for our organization. Um, But as I have um, been going through this, one of the things I was very resolute with my teachers is that we would continue the process of learning ourselves um, because I I wanted us to have something in front of us to excite us. And so we have been going through the book Innovator's Mindset by George Kuros. And the last chapter we were in was about uh, the um, about the growth mindset and specifically about uh, leader, uh, strengths-based leadership. And as I dug into the strengths-based leadership, one of the things that really um, hit home was that um, to lead from, from an idea of strength-based, you have to know your strengths. And then the other aspect is how do you Um, hone in or help your learners, whether they be um, the teachers that you work with, the colleagues that you work with, or the students that either you directly impact or as an administrator, you um, support so that teachers can impact. How do you pull strengths from your students as well? 
and one of the things that really hit home to me and it, it uh, just kept going back over and over in my mind is that whenever we're in a huge flux of change or things are really different or things don't feel familiar anymore, we operate in a survival mode. And sometimes when we're operating in a survival mode, that's not necessarily the place that we feel most successful or we're not necessarily operating in a place of strength. Sometimes we are operating in a sense of insecurity, possibly fear, and we lose a little bit of a sense of who we are. And I started thinking about this um, in regards to our teachers that are teaching in a pandemic, our students that are learning in a pandemic, um, and our parents who are trying to do their very best to parent and support their children in a pandemic. And we've kind of possibly forgotten what we're really good at. And so when we went through this study and we had a discussion with our teachers, rather than I asked my teachers, what are the strengths of your students? I asked my teachers to think about what are the things that you're really good at? What makes you feel successful? What are your strengths, not just as a teacher, but as a person? Um, and just ask them to, to think about those things and what are the things that you thrive in and then find the opportunity to exercise those things in the, in the next few days after the discussion, if not in the next few hours. And the refreshing conversations that came from that and the renewal that came from that conversation, it reminded me that so many of us need to ask ourselves those questions because we feel like there, we are in such a sense of failure right now. Um, there's a statistic out right now that says that students that are learning virtually, that possibly 83% of them will fail this, this fall. And to me, that is such a negative feeling because I know that you guys, the educators that are listening right now, are working so incredibly hard and you want so badly for our students to be successful. And so as we go between Thanksgiving and Christmas and we're bringing this first part of the 2020-2021 school year to a close um, and we move into Christmas and I know there are so many sacrifices that have been made for you guys personally and professionally please sit down and think about the things that you're really good at what are the things that are strengths of yours and they don't have to relate to your job maybe you're an excellent cook Maybe you have learned how to bake some really mean sourdough bread and that is just a major strength of yours because you can share that bread with your family. You can bring it packaged to your colleagues um, and it brings a sense of comfort and it's a way for you to connect with others. Um, and then ask your ki your kiddos in these next couple of weeks um, either through email or however you can connect virtually um, or if you're fortunate enough to be able to connect with students face to face ask them what is something you're really good at what is something that you thrive at and when's the last time you got an opportunity to exercise that strength and then encourage one another to exercise that strength and one of the things I want to leave you with, um, Brian Aspinall, I follow him on Facebook and Twitter, and also I follow him on Instagram. He is a colleague from Canada, a teacher there, and um, he had a, a tweet that he also shared on Instagram about, um, we rise by lifting others up. And I just really want to encourage you, sometimes when we're not feeling confident in what we're doing, 
we tend to hoard ideas or we tend to hold on to things or we take ideas and share them as our own because we're trying in some way to feel more confident ourselves. But I encourage you, I think there's nothing more profound and, and not a greater feeling than when you shine the light on someone else and share their great ideas and thinking. And I always walk away feeling so much better when I've shown the light on someone else and, and, and lifted them up. Um, and when I, I lift them up, I also too rise. And so I just want to shout out to Brian Aspinall. Thank you for sharing that because you reminded me of that. May we all be vulnerable and be willing to share the greatness of others. And as we rise in strength, one of the ways that we can rise in, in strength is by sharing the greatness of others and then by lifting others up, we also rise. I hope you guys have a great um, rest of the season. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be back for another episode uh, before uh, the holiday season. Uh, I hope this finds you well and um, by all means, please share with your friends and colleagues the Bulldog Educator podcast and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks so much. Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Music created for the Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm.